Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going over how to breed at Teji Eating Peterbanks. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now, like many of you out there, you probably have an Aptasia problem. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you do, or you're just getting ready for it. Now, Aptasia are these little glass anemones that can be a bit of a pest in an aquarium. They can sting other corals, and if they're annoyed, they're overfed, they can definitely get to kind of plague proportions. Now, there's many ways you can deal with them, but one of the best ways to do it is with a natural predator. And in that case, Aptasia eating nudibranchs. Now these hungry little guys eat one thing and one thing only, and that is Aptasia. That's their only thing they eat. So the tricky part is, if you run out of Aptasia, they are gonna die off, because that is literally their only diet. Now, as long as you have Aptasia, there is no fish are predating eating them, they're gonna keep on going, and they're going to basically keep on going until they run out of Aptasia. So super, super cool little guys. Now they are incredibly easy to breed. Um, when I was shutting down the previous frag tank, I collected some eggs and put them in this jar and I literally forgot about them. They sat on my desk for about a month. Also one day I noticed there's little babies in there. Now these babies are tiny. I'm talking like a period on a piece of paper tiny or like the tip of a pencil. That's how small these little guys are. So when they first hatch, they're gonna be hard to see. So you do want them in a fairly smaller container so that they are able to find food. Now with this, you're also gonna to wanna to introduce Aptasia, ideally little tiny ones, ones that they can actually eat. If it's too monstrous for them, obviously it's gonna be a bit more of a struggle for them. So you do wanna have a variety of different sizes of Aptasias to be successful at breeding these guys, from the teeny ones up to the bigger ones. Now as they grow, they are gonna get progressively bigger. You're gonna see a bunch of them kinda of tag team and all go for Aptasia at once. So really easy to breed, like super duper easy. I literally forgot about them. This is living on my desk. No heater, no flow, no circulation, nothing. Now I do do small water changes on this. Not very often, maybe like once every four or five days. I will take something like a pipette. I'll go in and I'll suck out the bits of detritus or an enemy leftovers, whatever the nasty stuff is in the bottom. I'll squirt into the container and I'll take a load of tank water and put it back into here. So that's basically all I do for a water change. Super duper easy. Now to get them to breed, there is nothing special you need to do except feed them Aptasia. So as long as you have a supply of Aptasia, these guys are dead simple to breed. Um, now a note, I don't have a heater, I don't have any flow or anything in here. Um, no flow seems perfectly fine for them. My office is a very warm room, it's a smaller room. I have my computer going, fish tanks, everything else in here, so it gets fairly warm in here. So ambient temperature is definitely enough. I mean, if you're in a cold place, then maybe you'll want to look at potentially adding a heat or something to your small little aquarium. But I think a smaller container is key. Like this is really pretty tiny. It's only probably a liter or two in there. So it's a rather small jar for it. So super duper easy. Now the hard part. The hard part is culturing Aptasia. These guys are hungry. If I put in a full size Aptasia in here, like, you know, decent sized sucker, the next day it'll be gone. They will devour it. So you need to get good at culturing Aptasia. I tried a little bit of an experiment with Aptasia, trying to put it in a big Tupperware container. Um, I got some rock off a buddy that had some on it and I put it in here. It also had a little bit of a zini and a few things on it. After a couple days, the water got super nasty, really funky. So that didn't work too well. So for Aptasia, you do want something with some flow and more of a proper tank style. Which is gonna bring us to Rev 2. I just set up this little five gallon tank and this I got some rock off a buddy. Thank you, Kai. And this is rock from a sump that has some Aptasia on it. So I have a power head in here, a little overkill, but I got a little Nero in there. And I have that just running at 15% and that is it. So I'm gonna let this go. So basically what my plan is, in order to get Aptasia to populate, you A, want to feed it and B, want to annoy it. So I'm gonna feed it some small food like Canalis or Reefroid, something to really help beef it up a bit. And then if you cut them with a razor, or you slice them in half with scissors, they're gonna spread. They're both gonna grow back and you'll have more and more Aptasia. So something to keep in mind, you need to get good at culturing Aptasia. Once you got that down and you have a constant supply of Aptasia, super simple to breed these guys and you will never have an Aptasia problem again. All right guys, if you have any questions on how to breed Bergia, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this quick video, hit that thumbs up button if you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next update.